Hello everybody, this is Niklas Huschmidt and welcome to a new video in which I'm going to analyze one of my games I played in a German Masters against Grandmaster Georg May. But first off, I need to apologize to my English-speaking viewers because, well, I haven't published any English material in a long time and the reason is that over the last month or so I played 28 rated chess games. So I was traveling a lot, playing a lot of games and actually what I would like to do in this video and the ones to follow, I would like to show you the most interesting games I played during this time. So the first game I would like to present to you was against Georg Meyer, was played in the German Masters 2017. A few words about the German Masters. That was a round robin tournament with eight players. And five of them qualified, they were nominated by the national coach and three of them had to qualify for the tournament. And I was one of them who had to qualify, so there was a rapid chess tournament beforehand, it was called the German Challenge and the top three made it and I, I made just barely as number three and was very happy because the tournament was very strong, all the strongest German players in Germany. and. Then we played against each other, seven rounds, everybody against everybody. So in round two, after I won my first game against Cosmos Fun, in round two I played against Georg Mai and it was quite an interesting game. So let's get to it. I was playing with the white pieces and I started out with e4 and Georg Mai is known as one of the biggest French experts in the world, especially Rubenstein expert, and I didn't want to see his expertise there. So I, I want to surprise him with a sideline 2d3 which looks very harmless at first but it has a lot of venom to it and actually over the last 28 games I had it five times and uh, I won four games with this variation. So I quite like it actually. It, it gives quite rich positions, complex positions. So d5, queen e2, knight c6, knight f3, and black, of course, has many different ways to play. And Meyer played as he played against Mickey Adams. And he went knight f6. And here Mickey went e5 followed by g3. But I had prepared something new. Actually a novelty, a move 5, which is bishop f4. This is not going to refute the variation or anything, but it's just something new. And it's always a little bit unpleasant for the opponent if he is surprised and if he has to think early and that's exactly the case here. So what's the point behind bishop f4? Well it stops black from going e5. It's kind of a nice waiting move. And now after a long think Georg took on e4. There are of course other options. Actually the, the computer move is queen e7 but this is not something you expect a human to play. Also black could play something like knight h5. So Gear took, takes back, and now knight e4. That was his idea. Because if I take the knight now, then the queen comes to the center and attacks both these pawns, so that's no good for white. But I don't have to take. So I play queen c4, activate my own queen, and threaten the knight on d4. So Georg took on f3. First I thought he, he might play something like bishop b4 check, when I cannot take on b4 because of the fork, but I can simply go knight bd2 and it just doesn't really make much sense for black. So knight takes f3, g takes f3 and c6. This move was played rather quickly by Georg and I think we were both quite happy with our position. So what has happened in the last couple of moves? Well, black has exchanged a pair of knights, which is favorable for him because he has less space so he wants to exchange pieces and my structure is weak. I have double pawns here on the f file. On the other hand though I have more space, my queen is more actively placed and I have the g file available. And this is the kind of position I quite like because there are a lot of dynamic possibilities. But now I realized my opponent wants to go queen a5 check followed by e5 then bring out his bishop and he would be doing quite well. So here I spent quite a while to determine my next move and then I played queen c3 which is actually quite strong. And it's a very nice prophylactic move. Well, 
I realized my pawn wants to play queen a5, so I prevent it, play queen c3. And also in this position, the dark squares are of vital importance. So it makes sense to place the queen also on c3, where it is aiming into this direction on the long diagonal. And here my opponent surprised me, he played knight h5. Really, all I was calculating the whole time was queen b6 with the threat bishop b4. And I want to go knight d2, but um, here actually it turns out that after bishop b4, queen b3 and now e5, a move, well, I'm not sure if I had considered it, but the point is if bishop takes e5 and bishop takes d2 check followed by queen takes f2 is possible. And after bishop retreats, now queen a5, and this position seems to be quite fine for black. So instead of knight d2, it's better to go a3 to stop bishop b4 altogether, but I didn't quite like queen c5 here, trying to trade queens. Still, computer says, this position is a little bit more comfortable for white because still the dark squares are weak in the black position. Let's return to the game. My opponent went knight h5, attacks the bishop on f4, so retreat to e3, and now queen f6. And here I played e5, bishop d4 is also quite nice, and just continue with development. I guess I didn't want to give him the f4 square so easily, but on the other hand, this bishop is very strongly placed. And especially, as we'll also see in the game, black has huge problems to develop his um, queen side, or rather get his queen side active, because the bishop is not having any nice squares right now. So I want e5, queen h4. Black could take on f3, but this, I guess, Georg also didn't really consider for, for long. Rook g1, threatening bishop e2, um, or knight e2, developing with tempo. And white is already up in development, and he will be up even more. So this is quite dangerous for black. So queen h4, knight d2. By the way, there was the threat again of bishop b4 to win the queen, so I had to stop that, but I would like to finish my development anyway, so this makes sense. Bishop b4 nonetheless, queen d3, and now f6, and this is a mistake. Black should go knight f4 here, queen e4, and now take on d2, and here I have two options. I probably would have taken with the bishop, I guess, um, but king takes d2 is also um, quite nice for white. And actually, white can put the king maybe on c3 or maybe play c4 first and is enjoying the nice position here in the end game, even though I wouldn't say it's too much. I probably, as I like to keep the queens on the board, probably would have taken with the bishop, knight g6 and f4, and um, I still fancy white's chances here, but it's not so easy to get an attack going, and black will also. Uh, finish his development and is quite well prepared here with his two two pieces close to his king for any attack that might come his way. So that would have been stronger. But also f6 is interesting, it just doesn't work out that well for black because he's so underdeveloped. Now castled. Knight f4 was played. Just trying to remember what I had in mind after f takes e5. Probably still rook g1. I mean, there are many options, obviously. But rook g1, or maybe knight c4, not quite sure. But there are many attractive options for, for white. So my point with knight f4, queen e4, and f takes e5. The point is that the bishop on b4 is indirectly protected. If I take, black has this, this cover check, I on e2 on d3 and will win the, my queen next move. So I cannot do that. But what I can do is activate my rook, play rook g1, not only hitting g7, but also having the idea of rook g4. 
And then, indeed, the bishop would hang on b4. So my opponent played castle. Now rook g4. And, well, queen e7 is not a move you want to play. Because then suddenly all the, all the black pieces are in strange spots. I go to knight c4, pick up the pawn on e5. And the, the black position is, is very bad. So my pawn took on d2, but I was very happy to see this move because it means I have the bishop pair. My opponent does not have the dark squared bishop anymore. And also I was looking forward to bringing my bishop on this diagonal and creating threats against the black king. So here Georg took on h2, grabbed another pawn. If he goes back to e7 and just finish development, bishop c4, bishop c3, this position almost plays itself for white. And the advantage is, is rather big already. After queen takes h2, it's actually a winning advantage for white already. But, well, still need to win a winning a one game. So here I have a number of options. I, I first also just thought about king b1. By the way, queen takes e5 once again doesn't work because of knight d3 winning the queen. So similar idea we saw earlier. So king b1 is good. Um, I was also considering bishop takes f4 and actually that's what uh, Georg thought was winning. Um, and it indeed looks really attractive, but black is barely, barely holding on here. Um, even though this would also give white the advantage, but uh, black is still in the game. So there were many options to consider. I spent quite a lot of time, uh, probably too much, um, on deciding what I'm going to do. I went for bishop b4 in the end. This move makes a lot of sense to me. The rook is nicely placed on f8 and I'm forcing it to e8 because black has to still keep an eye on d8, otherwise my rook would invade. And here went bishop d6. This is also a good move. I could also just go bishop c4, develop my last piece and um, black is also having difficulties finding any, any good moves if queen h6 I could now retreat to d2 and probably pick up e5 next move and the main problem for black is his, 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 his um, undeveloped queen side just cannot get out his pieces so I went bishop d6 now, knight g6, queen h6 is also possible, and then actually the, the best way to play, I'm not sure if I even saw this move to be honest, but the best way to play now would be to sacrifice the exchange by taking on g7, and then taking on e5 and f4 when the black king is open, and I have many files available to get to the king, I have the bishop pair, and this is game over pretty much for black. So knight g6 and now there would have been a very clear way to, to end this game pretty much. I played the move bishop d3 and that is okay, it's still winning, um, but makes life much harder. Rook g6, just get rid of one of the defenders and the game will be over in a few moves, pretty much. Bishop takes e5, queen h6 check, makes the most sense, defending the pawn, but now f4. And once again, black cannot develop his queen side. And uh, why it's play is very easy, bring out the bishop, bring out the rook, and that's it. Bishop to c4, d3. So the best black can do is to stop this by going... <laughs> Bishop rook to f5, so you can go rook h5, but now queen d4, once again also stopping black from developing the bishop, attacking the rook, and queen is coming to d8, rook g1, and it's pretty much time to resign for black. So, of course, I looked at rook takes g6, but I was a little bit too materialistic. I thought, well, I don't want to give up material, I don't want to give up an exchange, and that's why I didn't play it. Um, and I rather went for bishop d3. But now rook d8 is annoying. 
hitting the bishop on d6. And I saw this move coming and I thought, well, my next move surely must be the way to go. And I played f4, but this makes, well, for one, it just gives all the advantage away. And for the other, uh, it complicates matters. And that's just not necessary when you're so clearly dominating this position. Of course, white is down two pawns, but black is playing without two pieces here. So here, I should have just gone queen before. I could even still here sacrifice on g6, I believe. But maybe it's not as convincing because black can take on d6 now. But queen b4, which is of course a little bit of an artificial move, um, would still maintain the winning advantage. So f4, what's the point? Well, I want to go rook h1, bring this rook into the game and then have both rooks aiming at the black king and crush through with an attack. And I was quite, quite confident, I guess, um, but it is rather messy. So rook takes d6, of course, what else can black do? Pick up the piece, rook h1, queen takes f2, and now rook takes h7. That was the whole plan, right? Because if black now takes, then queen takes g6 is checkmate. And the problem was that in my calculation, when I had this position in my mind, I only looked at rook takes d3, which makes a lot of sense um, to exchange this defend uh, this attacker but what i had missed was rook d4 and that's what georg played and that's actually stronger um, because i thought after rook takes d3 i saw i have at least a perpetual so i thought okay we'll look at this and there might be more but in the worst case I have a perpetual that's always something nice to have kind of as a backup uh, here i can go rook takes g7 and black cannot take because that would lead to checkmate mm, in some way. Hold on, let me see how to do the smartest. Well, this is pretty, pretty simple. So that would be checkmate. So black would need to um, play king f8 here. And then, so, okay, I can go rook g8. And in the worst case, I can go rook g7 here back. And it's perpetual. But I thought maybe there's more. Actually, there's not more. But... Uh, at least I would have a perpetual. Um, and by the way, I should say we're both getting very low on time. Very low on time. So he went rook d4 and I was like, ooh, that's a problem. Because uh, I cannot take on g6 because of queen e8 checkmate, queen e1 checkmate. So I played rook takes g7 on the loss. And same story now, black cannot take, but he goes king f8. And not sure how much time I had, maybe below two minutes, and here I make a decisive mistake. I give another check. But to be fair, to find the saving line for white is not that, that simple. Queen h1 would have been the way to go. Queen h1. The point is, I'm still defending against checkmate, and black cannot move the knight because I would checkmate him on h8. And now I can go rook takes d3. Now the point is if I take, then black could take on g7 because the knight is no longer attacked by my bishop. But now, now it is time to give this intermediate check rook g8. If king takes, then rook takes g6. And I think here uh, white is actually winning because well, king of eight is king of seven is very easy because of queen h7 rook g8, and here I could win like this, and then there should be a mate somewhere soon. Let's see. Let's find it if we can. Or oh, can we? King e8, queen h5 looks convincing, and queen h8. There we go. So after rook g8, black would need to go to e7, run, and now queen h7 check. Also c takes d3 would be possible here, I guess. Uh, but queen h7 check, king d6, rook d8, king c5, rook takes d3, and the position is still a mess. <laughs> it would have been quite fun to play this with. 
uh, two minutes for 10 moves or so for both of us. So, yeah, I guess I didn't really calculate that much anymore here. I was like, okay, let's give another check and then retreat with the queen, but this is just the wrong way around. Um, especially here, the queen retreat is, is probably the worst point in time. If I want to do queen, queen retreat, I should have given another check um, so that black cannot play knight takes f4 as he did in the game. Once again, a piece of checkmate here. And he would need to find, well, there are different ways here, but e4 would have been strongest. And it turns out that um, that black can always save himself. But take on g6, this first looks very strong because of checkmate threat, but now just bishop d7 and the king finds a safe shelter on c7 and black is winning. Because, well, the bishop is lost, takes, it's just checkmate. So I played queen h1 and I thought, oh, I have queen h7, rook d8, there must be something, that there's just nothing there. Uh, just plays knight takes f4 and uh, I can give two checks. King ends up on c5 and that's all she wrote. The king is perfectly safe in c5. Black's up a piece and two pawns and it is game over. So we can go through the remaining game pretty quickly. I just played a few more moves because we're both in time trial, but they're not even any traps anymore. Black position is just completely winning. I uh, just played king b6, queen f8, a5, queen e7 and now Knight takes d3 is very simple because queen c5 trades the queens, blacks up peace and still two pawns. So I resigned. That was, of course, a very tough lo loss for me because as we have seen, I had a completely winning position, completely dominating. And I think it's fair to say I outplayed Georg up to the point where I complicated matter complicated matters uh, without any need and then lost the threat and lost the game. So that was tough, uh, but well, you have to learn from it and do it better next time. My big lesson is especially don't be too materialistic, defend, uh, exchange defenders of your opponent and um, also don't make it messy if it's not necessary, I guess. I hope you guys enjoyed this game and uh, also feel free to check out the other games I'm going to analyze. Uh, the next one will be um, my game against Matthias Blubaum, another very strong German player. I didn't mention this before, but most of you probably know that Georg Meyer is the German number, I think currently number two. And uh, then we'll look at my game against the German number three, Matthias Blubaum. So I hope you guys liked it. Let me know in the comments. and. Um, I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye.